Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Dibasri Bhasa, for giving us the opportunity and for giving and such a cooperation with us. And I want to thank to Ankit Mohai, Joita Dwara, and Kaisa Vidar. Uh, today, as, uh, today, our presentation topic is predictor fraud detection using machine learning. And we are going to discuss some of the main, uh, main topics that we have dealt with our uh, present with our research work, with our project work. Like, uh, we have at the beginning stage, we have taken some of the examples of credit card fraud detection. Then we have gone through the scope of the project. What will be, what will be the beneficial if we do a research work in this scope? Uh, then we have found out some of the difficulties by doing review, review presentation, review paper. We have gone through many papers and done some of the reviews. Uh, then we have finally we have taken a data set and try to understand the data for as an experiment, as in an experimental way. And after that, we have so, uh, later on, we have gone through many, many algorithms like logistic regression and logistic regression with weightages. Then we have gone through begging. Uh, all this will be dealt by by Joita Dora Kaisa with us. Okay. Now, first of all, what is credit card fraud? Like illegal data mm -hmm. migrants, illegal data use of credit card. Many, many hackers usually use our information in the, uh, without our knowledge. Without our knowledge, they used to track it and use illegally. That will, uh, and it is rising day by day right now, if we check it. Next slide. These are the, some of the examples. Now, many of the latest examples are there. Recently, RBI has also taken some many good steps uh, on credit card fraud. Even now, Assam government has also taken a step of credit card fraud. Not only credit card fraud, like such illegal uh, illegal activities are taking very good steps by CID, CBI of Assam government. And next. Our first motive, our first scope of the project is to detect the fraudulent transaction, as I've already mentioned, and minimize the credit card fraud so that many people get relief from such activities. And first, our main uh, scope of the data set that to is analyze machine learning algorithms. As we have done many research work, many gone through many papers uh, by doing some reviews. And um, based on that, better performance we have decided and gone through uh, backward elimination method by doing future selection method. Next slide. Like we have faced some, some of the difficulties. First of all, due to COVID, we have faced our coordination difficulties. And later on, then we have got, if we go through it, then we have found imbalanced data set. Many misclassification importance like overlapping data set, like lack of adaptability, and many, many things that cannot be ignored. But by facing such this, this difficulties, we have tried to, we have tried to overcome it. And finally, we have done a research work about, next slide. Like, about the data set, if you go there, uh, we have taken a data set from datawall.com. The data set transaction is of two days, where we have found 492 fraud, as, as it is has already mentioned that among 284807 data set. And it is very highly imbalanced. And after the uh, principal components obtained with PCA, users B1, B2, B28, the only features which have not been transformed, like time, amount, and class. Now I want to hand over to Kaisa with that. Uh, thank you, Faz. Uh, just so, a minute. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. I'm going to the, uh, that. Kindly, can you come back to that first this slide, the previous slide? Uh, not a Yes, yes, this one. No, 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 not first slide. The last one where I asked stop. I think PC. Uh, now previous slide. Yeah. Okay. Please stop. Features V1, V2 in India are the principal components obtained with PC. The only features which have not been transformed with PC are time, amount, and class. Can you explain this? Any one of you, the not time? just by us two. Uh, any one of you may explain this slide. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, so what happened? Uh, in the bank data set, uh, those data are very crucial. So it uh, cannot be 
available to everyone all the like uh, all the values like uh, there is a uh, pin identification number there is merchant number so um those are i think this b1 b2 till b28 except the time amount and class these are not uh, transform using tca so they have implement uh, principal component analysis on those the variable just to transform just to hide uh, from the world okay okay the next uh, i think joyet uh, kashyavi has started no so kashyavi uh, yes kashyavi. sir uh, yes sir uh, this is the first graph that we have used to uh, see and uh, see the data set to understand the data set so in this um, in this uh, graph we have uh, seen that the uh, fraud fraud trans uh, for fraud is very less and the non fraud transactions are very high so basically uh, as fair said uh, like in the previous slide that our data set is very highly unbalanced so in this graph from this graph we can see that it is unbalanced so in the next one it is the transaction that has been withdrawn like the amount that has been withdrawn so uh, for this we have used a scatter plot which is a type of plot so in this we can see at the time which transactions were done within two days from which we can see that the least number of transactions were made during night time uh, and the highest during the day time so why we so have the third a scatter plot scatter uh, plot hum so, uh, please uh, sir uh, Mm, Anyone may answer. See. Okay, uh, see the questions may be fired like that. So when uh, you are presenting in a group, then anyone may defend it. So my question is that you are using scatter plot to show something. What is that something? Why you are using that scatter plot? So to display the uh, values, like for typically like those variables. like because it is uh, because the thing is that um it can't be shown like in a bar graph because there can't be uh, a number which is between like here here only 15000 to 20000 like this so we can't use a bar graph in here rather we can use the scatter so for more specific um, plotting okay uh, kashavi uh i yes. want the means i'm not going to now give the explanation part now but i will uh, check this answer before 5 pm okay kindly note down that why we have used the Hello, okay so I, this means that i am not satisfied with the answer so all of all the members first discussed and But then can we say once more i have said that you will discuss among yourself and you will find the accurate answer for this because i am not satisfied with the answer uh, so after the presentation you are going to answer this okay next uh, kashavi go to the next um this one you are using which plot uh sir this one is histogram very good okay why we are using histogram plot uh sir it helps to discover and show the underlying frequency distribution yes. like a interval first set basis. of continuous data interval yeah. basis distribution okay this is the beams oh. that we are using so that's why we are using histogram analysis next slide yeah um uh sir this is uh, this graph shows the correlation between the variables next so slide. this is a heat map Uh, so these are the experimental results uh, that we have found after doing the loss regression and then uh, using loss uh, using class width parameter with the loss regression and then after that using bagging with loss regression and loss regression with weightage so in the first one uh, loss regression we have 
got the accuracy score as 99% uh, and the fraud accuracy again, 58 uh, false sorry i am going to again stop it so, oh yeah sir so. uh, uh, all of all the group kindly know whenever you are presenting this type of table okay either in research paper or in this type of project presentation you are going to put the value in bold which actually shows the max, means maximum accuracy or the suppose minimum error. Got my point? Suppose in this case, logistic regression, logistic regression, that is the weightest one, and I'm begging with logistic regression and begging with logistic regression, weighted. Okay, now if you notice this column carefully, which one is getting more accuracy? Can you tell me? Yeah, with the begging with loss equation with each parameter. Yeah, me, sir. But it takes uh, time. It takes time to answer this question. So why you are, uh, why what you have to do? You just need to bold it. Zero point nine 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 one five seven. Do you find some more What I'm actually mm -hmm. trying to mean? Yes, sir. Research paper also. Yes, sir. The value which is more accurate, you are going to bold it. So here's a value here. Zero point nine 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 one five seven. This bold me rakhoge. Or bold na nahi hai. Wahan pe. Uh, logistic regression ke liye accuracy ye mil raha hai aap bas focus karoge ki accuracy jo mil raha hai out of this logistic regression logistic regression weightage begging with logistic regression begging with logistic regression weightage we have got more accuracy for which one begging with logistic regression okay similarly for the fraud accuracy false positive false negative Vizipala, got my point yes, oh, yes sir. sir okay Come on, continue. Uh, sir, so this uh, was the me, experimental research. So yes, uh, wait, wait. Uh, I asked is asking from who? Sir, sir, Rajesh, uh, add your introduction. Uh, I'm not the host. Uh, Anku, uh, sorry, Ankit, uh, you please uh, allow her. Ankit. Okay, please continue. Uh, yes, sir. So till here. Uh, it was my part. Now the next part will be continued by Joita. Okay, continue, please. Joita, please. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Kashavi and Anki. And uh, as Kashavi told about our experiments in the previous slide, which, is, which didn't show any improvement in terms of fraud accuracy and the type 1, type 2 error. So uh, for this reason, we decided to move to feature selection, which mainly like aims at selecting only the relevant features. So uh, these are the general steps. So the uh, firstly, we'll select a significance level. So we have selected 0.05% and we have fitted the model with all the features that we have in our data set. So um, after that, we have to consider the future with the highest P value. So our work is to find out the P value and for that, we have used the states model, which is a statistical model which provides the logit function for performing loss regression. So uh, logit function generally accepts the parameters depending on different variables. So here in our case, we have like included the features, um, all the features as independent except class, which is taken as a dependent variable. So, um, um, so uh, after that, uh, our next step is to remove the feature which has value uh, greater than significance level and this will be done by backward elimination so here we can see that the features uh, has been uh, will be eliminated which is p value greater than significance level and uh, ankit a uh, previous slide and after that we'll fit the model with the new set of features that we got so uh, next slide Okay, so uh, this is the state model results that we got. So we can see, uh, as I have told earlier, mentioned earlier that uh, the dependent variable we have taken it as class. We have uh, used the model logit function, and uh, we have used the method uh, maximum likelihood estimation, which is generally used to uh, check the optimization that results in the best fit by finding the set of parameters. And after that, uh, they are l uh, l null, so which is the value of likelihood of the model. 
and after that uh, pseudo r square which is uh, like uh, reasonably represents meaning how much the regression model is fit so uh, the model is said to be fitted if the value of r square is close to one so uh, next slide uh, next slide Okay, so uh, this is the backward. Uh, so as I have told earlier that um, uh, we'll, be, we'll be using backward elimination. So backward elimination is generally a feature selection technique that focuses to remove those features that doesn't have any significant effect on dependent variable or prediction of the output. So this is a step. So firstly, we'll select the significance level. So we have selected 0.05%. Uh, so we have fit the model using all the possible predictor, or we can say it as an independent variable, <clears throat> but not the class because class was the dependent variable. So um, we have to identify the predictor with the highest p-value and uh, the predictor which has been found the p-value greater than significance level is being removed and and the model is being fitted with the remaining predictors. So uh, next slide. So uh, this is the code of backward elimination. Uh, backward elimination. So we have defined a function, um, and after that, uh, uh, we have used the function backward eliminations that takes the data frame dependent variable and also the list of column names. The regression uh, runs repeatedly eliminating features with the highest p value. So uh, the, and generally, like uh, it returns the regression summary with all the p values. So uh, next slide. Uh, so it generally shows the results of the backward elimination. So uh, we can see that 68% uh, of observation can be perfectly predicted. So now I'd like to hand over to Ankit for the further, for the further explanation. Thank you. Mm, okay, so thank you, Jyota. So next what we have done is that we have interpreted those results with uh, odd ratio confidence interval and the p-value. So the, to understand that uh, we have used the confidence interval so that we can um, analyze or we can describe the amount of uncertainty associated with this sample estimated of, with the population parameter. And then next, uh, we have uh, imported the logistic regression and we have uh, fit the model with logistic regression. And what we have found after model evolution is that the precision is 85% and recall is uh, somewhat 65%. So it is uh, good enough then um, from the last analysis when we, we when we have used begging technique then what we have observed that um, it was a false positive was like a 2000 above 2000 so after using um, backward elimination method um, we have observed that the type 1 error and type 2 error both have decreased and the correct prediction is also good enough Again, there may be a question uh, about this type one error and type two error. I don't need explanation right now, but you should be uh, confident enough to answer this question. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Okay. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Difference between type one yes, and Next, please. So here I have included all the model evaluation statics, uh, including the accuracy, the misclassification, the sensitivity, that is the true positive rate, and specificity, specificity uh, that is the true negative rate. And we have observed that uh, the positive likelihood uh, ratio and the negative likelihood ratio uh, is also good enough because the positive likelihood ratio is about uh, 2,650. So um, if the larger, the value is larger of uh, positive likelihood ratio, then it means the probability is higher um, that uh, the fraud is tested positive. So what we have done next, we have uh, lowered the threshold. We know that in uh, logistic regression, by default, it is 0.5. 0 0.5 0 threshold we have included. Fine. So what we have done, we have analyzed that what happened if we lowered the threshold. So what we have done here, we have used binaryzer. Binaryzer is a library. It helps to analyze uh, by, um, by lowering the threshold. So we can see that the 0 0.2 and 0 0.1, the false positive and false negative rate, increase much. So for this, what we have done, we have included ROC curve. 
so it is mostly used in binary classification problem and it is uh, pretty much uh, important if we are uh, implementing a logistic regression fine so and our model has predicted some probability what um, will be the threshold we should decide so by default if we consider logistic regression it consider anything lower uh, that is um, uh, greater than 0 0.5 is as one and uh, smaller than 0 0.5 as zero uh, so in each uh, every use cases uh, that we have this threshold can play a very important role so what we have uh, observed that we have uh, 0 0.97 um, roc accuracy score so more the area under the curve better the model next we have also analyzed with um, precision recall curve because uh, precision recall uh, is more informative than this roc curve if the data set is imbalanced so in our case as we have observed through eda uh, through a data visualization that the, our data set is quite uh, imbalanced so what we have done we have also included the precision recall curve so that uh, we can observe more so um, and here in this precision recall curve the baseline baseline of the precision recall curve curve is determined by the ratio of the positive and the negative so we can understand more about the model how accurate it performed so it is 73 percent so it, it is good enough so we have first we have uh, published our review paper on um, soft computing intelligence system yeah, uh, scopus index this is the review paper and Next, we have uh, published our competitive analysis on um, journal, International Research Journal of Modernization in Engineering, Technology, and Science. So, thank you. Okay. So, in this case, uh, two more suggestions I can put forward. That uh, as a future research scope, what you are planning? Okay. In brief. Not Sir, as we as we see that uh, we have applied logistic regression fine and we know that uh, in logistic regression what what is the main um, mathematical intuition is the sigmoid graph and yeah. if the data set is more complex uh, we cannot deal with uh, directly we cannot deal with logistic regression we have to perform lots of um, like feature selection lots of things we have to analyze and all so what we are thinking is that we can use artificial neural network with uh, the uh, with the with sigmoid function sigmoid as activation function and artificial neural network can perform better in complex data set we can make such as as option because uh, we know like there are lots of theorem fine there are lots of theorem with uh, lots of not there is only one theorem that is um, no lunch free something so it's uh, state that like there is no such perfect algorithm so at least we have to make assumption so our next assumption is that we have to use, we can use artificial neural network with activation function sigmoid sigmoid so that we can analyze that it can perform better in uh, credit card for detection okay so the next uh, means research work will be pro that artificial neural network and that complex yes, sir. data set so are you planning for any particular data set or any real time data set that you are going to use for this Yes, sir. Actually, the thing is that if we get the real, real-time data set, then it will be far better. Even uh, this data set, what uh, which we have used is also real uh, from European Bank, but it was too old. It is like uh, from 2031, uh, 13, 2013. So if we actually we don't know that how to yes, yes, actually first yes, actually, actually we don't know how to get such data set, and if we are capable to get um you know access uh, to to such data set if you get access to such data set then surely we will try on the um like real time data set and all okay so next question to you uh say see uh, one hour left for five so within one hour you will find out names of few such data sets which is openly available that is available for academic research you know about the open source data set right so yeah, yes, Q, Q data sets government permit for academic research collaborations. Okay. Does India has such type of data set or data repository? So you are going to find it out within one hour. Of course, your the answer will be towards positive, 
because you know some institutions are there in India. One is there in uh, I think uh, uh, Gujarat, okay, uh, which is working on in, the, in this area. So you will find it, but you need to search it. So first, collect information about such type of data set. Uh, and of course, you are not going to consider the six years or seven years back data because this credit card fraud, that things you have to consider some recent data. Okay, so this, mm, yes, sir. Yeah, this should be taken under consideration. So very good presentation, but uh, and another thing I may suggest that uh, as in your final project presentation, you will be given only 10 minutes of time. So to Maluke, what you will do, you will practice in such a way that you can complete whole this presentation within 10 minutes. Which thing to skip, which things to explain. Some things you need to yes, focus, sir. some things you need to say one or yes, two sir. line for that. So these things you are going to decide right today. Okay, you are not going to uh, do it for tomorrow or like that. You are going to decide it from a Google a Zoom meeting or whatever it is, that which points mm -hmm. you will cut up on which points you will. So best of luck for yes, you. I'm going to Thank now, you, uh, you can cut this or you can, I mean, uh, uh, leave, means leave this presentation or meeting. We'll start the next.